Good morning, everyone. As a result of the August 20, 2024 regular meeting of the Evanston City Council relating to a purported, quote, vote of no confidence, end quote, of Mayor Kent Williams, misinformation, inaccuracies, and potential disinformation have been circulated in the community requiring a statement regarding the events that took place. Four councilors, Tim Lynch, Jesse Lind, Mike Sellers, and Jen Hageman asserted incorrectly that Evanston Mayor Kent Williams led an, quote, improper adjournment of the city council meeting of August 6, 2024, end quote, and that his action was, quote, or quote, was in direct breach of procedure and in violation of the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America and the United States and Wyoming Constitutions. Essentially, parroting claims of the editor of the Union County Herald that, quote, he, referring to Mayor Williams, didn't even adjourn the meeting properly because he was so unhinged. Parentheticals, council meetings require a motion and a vote for proper adjournment, and a huff slammed his little gavel and ruled that sufficient. And parenthetical, that, my friends, is absolutely news, end quote. The truth of the matter is that the adjournment was proper, in compliance with procedure of the council, and not objected to by any of the councilors. The City of Evanston's procedure for adjourning meetings is in compliance with Robert's Rules of Order, which provides that if an agenda is complete, the meeting can be adjourned by the presiding officer. This adjournment practice is followed by other governmental entities in Wyoming. The city has been adjourning meetings using the exact same procedure for 35 years, including an adjournment by Councilor Sellers acting as presiding officer of a regular meeting of the council on October 17, 2023. Five members of the governing body have at least eight years experience on the council, including Councilor Lynch with almost 12 years and Councilor Sellers with almost eight years experience. With the combined 20 years of council experience, which would entail a minimum of 500 total meetings attended, not one of these two members ever objected to the manner of adjourning a meeting until the local news media suggested some unsupported impropriety. Additionally, neither Mr. Lind nor Ms. Hageman objected to this adjournment procedure in the 20 months they have served on the council. It is also important to note or point out that no one stated or called a quote question of privilege end quote and objected to the adjournment of the meeting. This action stops all debate and further action or discussion so an objection can be made in order for the chair to rule on the issue and the body potentially appeal a ruling. No counselor contacted me with any questions on any adjournment of any city council meeting at any time prior to the meeting on August 20, 2024. And in fact, the first contact from Councillor Lynn occurred over one hour after the meeting on August 20 was adjourned in the same way meetings have been adjourned for over 35 years. In connection with the August 20, 2024 meeting specifically, it is important to correct another erroneous conclusion or statement regarding the reference of vote of no confidence, quote, end quote. There was no vote concerning any motion. The statement read by Councilor Lynn was made during council comments portion of the agenda. Action is not taken during council comments. No one including the four supporters of the statement, took action to amend the agenda and place a vote on any motion up for vote of no confidence on the agenda for discussion and a final vote. The motion, quote unquote, was not seconded by any counselor. No discussion was held where the motion properly seconded was open to discussion by the council. No question was called on in any such motion placing a vote before the body. 
it would have been difficult for such process to occur due to the fact that two counselors and the mayor and everyone in the public did not receive any statement or information regarding a vote of no confidence. The action taken by the four counselors does raise a question of potential violation of the Wyoming Open Meetings Act. A violation of the act can result in imposition of civil penalties of up to $750, beg your pardon, and can result in action taken in violation of the act being declared null and void to determine whether an assembly, action, and meeting as defined in the act may have occurred by the four counselors I will consult with the mayor on the proper method to investigate the matter fairly, impartially, thoroughly, and expeditiously, including requesting appointment of an investigator and or special counsel who can report findings and recommended action on any such findings. Ms. Manchester, do you have any questions? Can I get a copy of that, please? You certainly may. Do you have any other questions? Thank you all for attending.